Hi everyone, Mark Moykins here. As part of my 2020 New Year's resolution, I wanted to practice being live on camera more, so I felt more natural, more comfortable. I don't have a script I'm reading from right now, so I'm just kind of winging it to see how natural I can be. <laughs> so last night I want to tell you about this meetup I went to, where I gave a presentation on Swift UI animations. Now I got a tip from uh, my friend Paul Hudson. I'm one of his patrons, and I support him, and in return he gives me tips about how to be a better presenter. So one of the things I implemented was teaching one thing. He gave some kind of quote like, if you teach one thing, the audience will leave remembering one thing. But if you teach more than one thing, they'll basically leave the meetup or leave the, the presentation uh, not remembering anything. So that's what I concentrated on, was teaching one thing. And with SwiftUI animations, I'm gonna teach you what I taught. It's basically the three things that I focused on the most was three things that you need for every Swift UI animation. Now, if you've done animations in Swift before, it's a lot different. <laughs> Swift UI, it's great, but it takes a different mindset. So I'm gonna walk you through those three things that I focused on. Now, the three parts for every Swift UI animation is one, there has to be some kind of trigger, something that starts the animation. Now, this can be a button tap, this could be sliding uh, the slider, it could be using the stepper there's some kind of event happening. It could also be scrolling, or there's an event called on appear for your views. When a view appears, it kicks off, it can kick off an animation. So that's number one. Now the second thing that has to happen is there has to be some kind of change of data, because your views are going to be uh, listening or responding to a change of data. And this comes in the form of a state variable, or it can be in the form of a state variable. But there has to be some data that gets changed. Now the third part that you need for every animation is some kind of UI change. Sure, you can add an animation modifier to a view, but it's not going to do anything unless there's some kind of change happening to that view. Now let's take a look at an example here with the scale effect property. A view can be one size, but then when this variable changes to true, you can scale it to make it bigger or make it smaller. So that scale modifier, the scale effect modifier, is going to be looking at that variable, and if it's true, it's going to make it bigger. Uh, if it's false, it's just going to stay at one, you know, the normal size. So those are the three parts you need. One, some event that is going to be triggering the animation. Two, some kind of data change, and this is most likely going to be a state variable. And then the third thing is, your view is going to respond to that variable change, or that data change. Now this is different from Swift, because in Swift, when you tap a button, you just have your UI view .animate, and you can reference you know, changing some UI view directly. But you can't do that with Swift UI. You can't reference your other views directly. So the only thing you can do is change some data, and then your view, it's up to your view to respond to that data and have uh, perform some kind of UI change. And that's what you're animating, is that UI change. Okay, so that's what I focused on last night. I hope this helps you out in understanding Swift UI animations a little bit better. Uh, it's pretty cold out here, so I'm going to cut it short. As you can see, it's snowing. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys.